Aquilegia, an ecological adapter. Asian ancestors. The Columbine Aquilegia belong to the family Ranunculaceae. The Euroasian Aquilegia population originates from Aquilegia fragrans in the Himalayan region on west of India. A split occurred there and Fabellata, which occurs on the Pacific islands of northern Japan, the Sahal and Kuril islands and northeastern China are also part of the family tree. The sister species of Fabellata, Ecalcarata and Yabeana, which occur in central China, also occur in the genus. It is like these all came from the Himalayan region and moved towards the Pacific coast. Let's have a look on how they look. This is now fragrance. This is flabellata. As you can see, then there are different color variations of it. And this is Ekalkarata to the left and to the right is Yabeana. So quite similar to each other, but uh, Ekalkarata doesn't have the spurs, whereas then Yabeana have very long spurs. Close relatives to the European Columbines. The European Columbine's closest relatives in Asia are in South and Central Siberia, Sibirica, Öksusepala and Glandulosa, and then in Caucasus also Olympica. It seems logical to think that the ancestors of the European Aquilegias grow in the mountains of the Central Asia, Altai and Tian Shan regions, because 10 of the 23 Asian varieties are found there. Only two species grow in Caucasus, four in the Western and Southern Himalayas, and seven in Eastern China, Korea, and Japan. Closest to the Asian relatives seems to be Olympica in the Caucasus mountains, and in Europe its relative is Aquilegia nigricans that grows in the Balkan mountains, Carpathian mountains, and in the Alps are Aquilegia alpina. The move from Asia to the mountains in Europe seemed to have happened already 2.54 million years ago. And here to the left we have Aquilegia sibirica, and to the right Aquilegia olympica. So, um, in Sibirica, the inner uh, petals are nearly totally white, whereas it seems like on these pictures, at least, the Olympica has a little bit more blue color. But um, this is difficult to say just based on two photos. To the left, we have then Glandulosa, white, and then Oxusepala to the right. Nigricans and Alpina. North America. North American Columbines descended from Aquilegia turksaninovi and Aquilegia viridiflora. They spread most likely from Asia via Bering Strait to America three to four million years ago during the end of the Miocene epoch or in the beginning of the Pleistocene epoch. And here you can see those both two, so Aquilegia turkaninovi to the left and to the right Aquilegia viridiflora. Both have pretty long spurs. Are columbines so diverse? Columbines are cross-pollinated and very easy so. One reason for the diversity is related to the pollinators of columbines. 
Columban species have changed according to the pollinators in the ecosystem in question. In Europe, columbines are mainly pollinated by long-tongued insects such as bumblebees. Long-tongued bumblebees are becoming increasingly endangered, so growing columbines do improve their living conditions. In America, moths have also been pollinating columbines in addition to bumblebees. Today, they are increasingly being pollinated by hummingbirds. Scientists have identified 7 to 12 changes in pollinators in Asia and North America. There have been only two changes in the Euro-Asian columbines. One reason could be that the native bees, bumblebee and moth populations of Euro-Asia have persisted over the long time. Specialization of pollinators it has been studied that certain pollinators prefer certain varieties and thus hum hybrids are not very common. For example, hummingbirds are pollinating Formosa and Elegantula. Sphinx moths are pollinating Pubescens. Bees and bumblebees, Micranta and Incurvata and flower flies, Ecalcarata. Such sympathy for pollinators is lower in Europe than in North America. It would seem that in Europe, Aquilegias can share or use the same pollinators without creating hybrids. Habitat. Columbines grow in many different places and when the weather conditions have changed, so have columbines. Some become geographically isolated, especially in Europe. More than 14 habitat shifts have been identified in Euroasia and 10 in Asia, North America. European columbines originally grew in forests and grasslands. During the last ice age, some seem to have migrated to mountainous and rockier habitats in southern Europe. As a result, more endangered columbines are growing in the Pyrenees, Alps, Apennines and Balkans. In North America, the original habitat appears to be forest and there is a diverse group of generalist aquilegias suitable for forest, grassland and rocky habitats. The spreading of aquilegias here one can see now different centers and how it has been spreading them out. Let's have a look at an European Columbine population here in North Europe. Uh, we will start by looking at some very old paintings. Here is uh, one by Hugo van der Goes, and this is painted between 1473 to 1475. And you can see here in the middle of the painting a pot or a glass with aquilegias. And two more to the left a painting from 1480 to 85 and uh, here you can see pretty big and big picture of an aquilegia with uh, long spurs and uh, blue in color and to the right you have one painting a little bit later from 1510 to 20 and here also a beautiful uh, columbine in the middle with perhaps slightly shorter spurs and a lighter blue in color. From about the same time we have Flora by Francesco Melzi from 1520 with a beautiful columbine in, the, in, the, in her hand. And here also the spurs are very uh, long. It is assumed that the common columbine 
came to North Europe from the Alpine meadows of Southern Europe via the monastic gardens of Germany. The plant is mentioned by Hildegard von Bingen in the 11th century in her book Physica. She was a uh, nun in a convent and uh, among other things then she was uh, speaking a lot for uh, the use of uh, triticum spelta, uh, so dinkel, uh, in order to heal people. It was used in the 17th century as a medicinal plant for yellow fever, gallstones, as a source of vitamin C for wounds, lice, vomiting and epilepsy. It is known now that the whole plant is poisonous. The plant is still used in homeopathy. The flower has been a symbol of Venus and considered a symbol of infidelity. In the Celtic world, it was believed that the plant could open doors to another world. There are several paintings of Mary, Jesus and Aquilegia plant. Five does sitting together in a flower were seen. So the spurs of the flowers are like five does. Freya, the Scandinavian fertility goddess, is depicted together also with columbines. Morphological appearance. Flowers were blue, but also white. Pink and dark purple types are seen. The flowers are simple or double, sometimes also multicolored. Modern varieties have more color and are usually very long spurred. The leaves are grayish green. The leaves can be confused with the Siberian columbine meadow rye. Uh, Talictrum aquilegifolium, but the flowers of that one is different. You can see the flowers of, of that plant to the right here. This is a very rare plant in Finland and it occurs in Estonia also, but it's not either that common in Estonia. Here to the left you can see then perhaps this old cultivar type with very short spurs and, and double, uh, double flower with a lot of petals as well. And uh, here is a more modern variety to the right. An Estonian forest population, Kurangu. In Karelia and the Baltic countries, columbines appear in the wild. It is difficult to say which populations are wild and which are cultivars. In Estonia, they grow both in meadows and along forest roads. They have different colors, but it seems like there are no double flowered nor multicolored ones in wild populations. So here we can see uh, white ones and red ones and pay attention to the uh, length, the spurs size, how it differs. In these two here, you can see that they are pretty short, whereas this one have a very long ones. Here it goes uh, more darker red. And also here you can see that some have very short spurs and others have very long ones. And we go into these blue ones, blue types. And here it's the same some with very short spurs and then there are others with longer. And uh, now we have the different um, colors all on one plate here. So you can see the change in color. Here, uh, most interesting then, um, some of them have no spurs at all and uh, others have very degraded, very small ones. And blue ones in water, white and pink and red ones. Double flowered columbines in the Swedish book Blumor from Morvorstid, it is said that the double flowered with short spurs are old columbine cultivars. 
in all medieval paintings and illustration books, columbines are all simple. And one more um, uh, slide with these old, short, spurred, double flowering columbines, cultivars then most likely, that are grown in an own Estonian, old Estonian garden in, in Kielsi Väikemaaja. And uh, here actually uh, the one to the left is double colored, white and red. But uh, as these are very easily uh, cross-pollinated, then I have, for example, seen also very light, light blue ones. And uh, it's not dominating. So if you take seeds from that one, then it could be whatever color the next year. And I never saw that light blue color anymore. <laughs> it was only once. <laughs> 